I was in my home in uh, Victoria, British Columbia, when I received a phone call from Brother Branham, and he was saying that I believe we're going to have a good hunt. Uh, Brother Eddie, we're going to have a good hunt. I had a dream or a vision, and he began to tell me a little bit about it and uh, said that he would give me the full details when we met. So when we met in Dawson Creek, he said, I had this dream or vision. He said, if it was a vision, it'll happen exactly like that. And in the vision, he said, there were two or three small fellows on the hunt. I had arranged the hunt, and there was only three of us, including Brother Branham, Brother Bud Southwick, Brother Branham, and myself. We were the three. Brother Southwick's son, Blaine, was not able to go on the hunt because he was in the far north in the Arctic uh, on a survey crew and would not be able to be back for the hunt. Well, uh, so I thought, well, maybe it was just a dream. I don't know. But he, Brother Branham said, we saw, I saw this large animal and its horns kind of went back on its head. And I said, oh, that may be a caribou. He said, well, I don't know. I haven't seen a caribou before. But he said, this was a dark chocolate brown animal. I said, no. I said, caribou are st uh, like battleship gray. And he said, well, no, this was chocolate brown. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't stray from that description at all. It was a dark chocolate brown animal. So then uh, he said, uh, there was, uh, in this, in this vision or dream, I saw uh, one of the young men, his hands were like this, he said, and they were spread out. He said there was no hair on the arms, on the hands. He said, I would say, and he kind of stopped like that, looked up, he said, probably about 18, 18 years old. Now, I would like to encourage the viewers to be real attentive to the details because this vision was six hours in the fulfillment. And uh, he said, one of, my, one of my buddies was in a, a green checkered shirt. Well, I had had a green checkered shirt and I had told my wife to, before the hunt, I said, just throw that away because it had been torn and sewn several times around here on the pocket. My husband was going hunting. He had this pretty good shirt, green checkered shirt, but it, had, it was torn around the pocket and I had mended it several times. And he said, go and get me another shirt. It was a nice shirt doeskin, soft, nice hunting shirt. And I said, okay. But I just didn't have time. I didn't have a car. I had the little girls. You have to take a bus into town. So I mended it again the best I could. And I put it into his duffel bag. And away he went. When we got up to Dawson Creek, I asked Brother Branham, if he would tell the vision to my father. So he related the whole vision that this dark chocolate brown animal and he had gotten that animal and had gotten another, uh, a grizzly bear at the same time. And for me, that was a shock. I thought I had lived in the North. I had never gotten a grizzly bear myself. And I thought that was outstanding. And then we journeyed on the way up the Alaskan Highway to Brother Bud Southwick's place. And when we are, drove into the yard, here all the children came out, and including Blaine, his son, who was supposed to be in the Arctic. And I said, well, you're Blaine. I thought you were away up and you wouldn't be able to go on this hunt. Well, he said he just came back a couple of days ago. And I asked Brother Southwick, Will Blaine be able to come on the hunt? Well, yeah, he thought he better come on the hunt with us. So suddenly now I saw that we were two or three little fellows 
on the trip. And uh, Blaine was fixing a little harness on the side of one of the buildings. And I was standing there with him, just the two of us, and I asked him, I said, Blaine, how old are you? He said, 18, why? I said, well, I was just curious to know. Now we had a young fellow and he was 18 years old and myself and when Brother Branham was giving the vision, I asked him to tell Brother Southwick and his family at the supper table, tell them about the vision. So he got to the dark chocolate brown animal. I said, Brother Bud, I always thought that caribou was a dark uh, battleship gray. Well, he said, you know, that is strange. He said, all every caribou that I've seen on the north side of the highway, the Alaskan highway, has been a kind of a battleship gray, and he used the same words. He said, and they are a bush caribou, and all the caribou on the south side and the west of the highway has been a mountain caribou, and they're kind of a dark chocolate brown color. And I said, well, where are we going? He said, well, we're going on the south side of the highway. So things were coming together, and I, there was more weight to it being a vision than or being a dream. And I, the only thing was a young man with a chocolate, or with a checkered shirt, and when we got up to make our camp, we made our camp and way down the valley, it would be to my right, we saw the, on the skyline, there were a few caribou and some mountain sheep. And so Brother Southwick said, well, tomorrow I think that we should probably go up there. It was probably two or three miles. And uh, so the next day, we made our way up there and we got up on the ridge and uh, we ran into a few caribou and they scattered and one ran down this way. And so I went on my, we all split up and Blaine went one direction and Brother Branham and Bud went another direction and I went one direction and I found a young caribou and I, I was needing meat and I shot that caribou and it was just dark chocolate brown. And so Blaine came by and we dressed that caribou out and then we went back and met together and then we climbed up on a mountain ridge and Brother Branham said, on this, in this vision, there was a great panoramic, and he moved his arm this way. And he said, on this great panoramic, and then he says, my friend in the checkered shirt was way down this way towards camp, and camp was two, three miles this direction. And he said he was waiting there, and on the way there, uh, he said, I got this large caribou, dark chocolate brown. And he said, on the way then, we saw a grizzly bear on the mountain. And God gave me that animal in one shot. And I was just kind of speechless. And uh, then while the vision was being fulfilled, we sat on this ridge and I just looked at this beautiful panoramic. I can say that I wasn't really conscious of every detail of the vision, but it, it was just, we were caught up in the, in the beauty of the moment and the great mountain peaks on this side, on the left side, and spurring off onto our ridges, and we were ate our lunch on this one ridge. And Brother Branham said, what is that over there, Brother Bud? And uh, he took his binoculars. There was two great caribou animals, bulls, laying on a mountain glacier. I think laying on a glacier because there's less bugs. And they're, it's very nice and cool. And they were laying there, kind of sleeping, I think. 
And so Brother Bud laid out a plan. He said, well, Blaine, he said, why don't you take Brother Eddie and take the horses and go and get his meat and then journey down this way to this dry creek bed and wait for us and we'll come down and meet you. So I suggested that we wait till we see if they got this animal, which in about another half hour they did. And I came up over the ridge and got this large uh, caribou bull animal. And so then we went and got my meat and we journeyed down here to this dry creek bed towards camp. What was strange that morning, when we had just left the tent, I fell into a creek and I got my clothes wet. And I said to the brothers, just wait here and I will run home. I'll run back to the tent, which was a short, very short distance. And I, I, and I opened up my duffel bag and there was this green checkered shirt. And when you got up hunting and had that little mishap in the water, and had to go back to the tent and open up his bag and there was the green checkered shirt. And he said, I told Ruth to get me a new shirt and she didn't do it. But I didn't know that it was all a part of the vision. You just do things without even thinking that there's anything spiritual tied to it. And I put it on and that's the shirt I had. I had a green checkered shirt. The vision and all of the details, just, uh, it was not in my mind whatsoever. I was cold and wet and I changed and, and uh, then I ran up to catch up with the other brothers and away we went. So when we went down to this dry creek bed, I had on that checkered shirt. We waited, Blaine and I, we waited for about half an hour to an hour. And Blaine said, if they're not here in about another half hour, he said, I'm gonna go and find them. And in the vision, I was alone waiting for them. In another half hour, they still weren't there. He said, so I'm gonna go and see if I can meet up with them because we didn't know what had happened. Uh, we didn't know whether we missed them somehow or whatever. So he leaves and now I'm waiting alone. And I was waiting about another half hour. And then I heard some voices and I just took a few steps to the trail and here came Brother Bud carrying this big caribou on his head, on his shoulders rather. We come all the way down that creek bottom packing that caribou cape and head you know, and on and he kept a watching for this this grizzly well you, you know it was like looking on the side of that hill up there only one that bush up on it you know just that short grass and there was just no bear there that's all and all all at once well we were getting pretty near to where you guys was and and I'd give give it up, really, to see a, a grizzly. You know, and finally, we were sitting down resting again, and he pointed up there on the side of the hill, and he said, "What? What's that up there?" Well, he knew what it was. <laughs> I did. <laughs> as soon as I glimpsed up there, I knew it was a bear. So I said, "You know," and it was a silver tip, and it was about the same color as an old Rome milk cow that I had, and I said, man, oh, my sure looks like my own milk cow. <laughs> yeah, and up, up we went, when he said he would shoot it, you know, it was, to me it was like him shooting from here up to the top of that cliff up there, better, better than that. I had no idea he'd, he would shoot that far, and I, I, I wouldn't have let anybody else shoot that far anyway, you know, they could have crippled something there and all. But, but we had no time to, to go around and come up from the back of that mountain. It took us a day. And so I said to him, I said, we'll have to let the, that bear go tonight and 
come back after him tomorrow. But we can't get, can't get any closer this way. He's looking right down at us. And, oh, he said, I, I can kill him from here, he said. And I doubted that, really, because I hadn't seen him, you know, shoot that much. That caribou was right on top of that when he shot that. <coughs> Boy, when he shot, that old bear just was coming. He he pulled that gun up and it snapped. Man, <clears throat> my hair stood right up. That was after the first shot. Yeah. That bear was coming. He fell. Oh, for me, that big big poplar over there from us, like and right even with us, like that too. He fell in that short chain thing you know, there. And I said, you watch him and I'll go over and see how dead he is. <clears throat> so he did. But he was dead as could be. He fell. Neat. And another thing he said, he said that it going to be too late. We wouldn't uh, skin that bear out that night. Well, I never dreamt of you know, leaving a trophy over and up. The other old bear could have come along and tore that all to pieces, but that's the first thing we thought about, you know, leave it, leave it till tomorrow. Every every word that he said comes just as true as true could be the fact. You know, and you never even thought about it at the time, but you get thinking of it afterwards. I ran up to Brother Branham. Brother Branham was standing there. I said, I put my hand out to shake his hand. I said, congratulations, Brother Branham. That's, that's a lovely animal. And he said, uh, I got a bear too. And I just tapped him on the shoulder. I said, oh, you didn't get a bear the same day. He said, yeah, I did. And I, I felt strange. I said, well, where is it? And Bud said, well, we're not able to carry it. He said, the hide would probably wear three, weigh 300 pounds. And I said, well, and I felt real strange. And Bud walked over to his saddle horse, which was right there, and went into the saddle bag and brought out a little round tape with a push button on the side. And I was kind of amused. I had lived in the wilderness all my life and had hunted and never saw anybody carry a tape. And then I thought, well, he's a guide now. Probably he's interested in, you know, the size of the horns, etc. And he brought out this little steel tape and he put it right down uh, at the base of the horns. There's a little ridge there. And he hooked the tape there and then the tape went into this curve and then around. And every time he started to go around, the bottom flicked out. And then it, so he started it again. And, followed it around, trying to measure it correctly, and it flicked out about the third time. He says to his son, Blaine, hold that tape in there. And so Blaine knelt down on one knee and spread his hands out. 18-year-old boy. And then I, I begin to feel real strange. Held his hands out, and Brother Bud pulled the tape around. And Brother Branham said in the vision, he just heard a voice saying, it's 42 inches, and that was it. And I, I put my head, Blaine looked up while he was holding the tape. Brother Bud, he held his head over the tape to make sure where the black line and the black line of 42 inches fell at the last point of the horn. And he said, it's 42 inches. And I, I just felt overwhelmed. And Brother Branham, he did not look. He just stood there erect. And I was right on his shoulder. And he just said, he said, there it is. It was all over. And the grizzly was laying up on the mountain. And there, there the horn was. And the vision was over. That took about six hours in total for the whole vision, a dark chocolate brown animal. 
and uh, I'm standing there in a green checkered shirt. And uh, the vision was completely fulfilled. And I can say to all who hear, this is a true report. Everything is true, absolutely true. Thank you.